Hey, what's up guys? Garrett here. Welcome back to another video. In this one, we're going to be taking a look at how to make our own custom bottom navigation bar in Flutter. Now, you may have seen my other video that I made on this, which was using material designs built in native bottom navigation bar, and that actually went pretty well. It's got over 22,000 views, and it is apparently the number one most watched video on that subject on YouTube. But that was a year ago, and that was also doing it in one very specific way, using Google's native uh, bottom navigation bar that they built in. So I thought in this video, we take a break from the uh, debugging stuff and we could see how to actually make our own bottom navigation bar a custom one that can really do whatever we want. Before we get started though, two very important things to note. Number one, there's a link in the description to a channel survey. I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on, you know, what do you think about my videos and what do you think about the channel? It helps me to get better basically. So link down below, let me know what you guys think. And the other thing, number two, is the like button. You should go and hit that right now because it helps out the channel and especially with the YouTube algorithm and all that fun stuff. So go hit that like button and once you do, we'll be ready to start the video. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take note of where we are. I've basically taken the YouTube demo that I've been using last time we took a look at, I think, or the last code that I have in here rather, was taking a look at all of the, you know, the life cycle hooks and everything of, um, of what's going on here, or not lifecycle hooks, but just seeing the lifecycle of a stateful widget. So I've removed all that stuff. Um, if you want, you can just start out with a fresh flutter create and then whatever you want to call this. Um, it doesn't really matter, but the starting point that we'll be using is the basic flutter application that you get out of the box, right? The next thing that we're going to do is add for home. Make sure that this is a material app widget inside of your main widget like I have here and then add a home page right there. We're actually gonna re be removing that, but you just, just to make sure that you're at the same point that we are, um, that's how you kind of want it to look. The next thing that we're gonna do, and you can see this here, I mean, it does, it does work and all that cool stuff. Actually, I'm also going to increase the size here for you guys. I sometimes forget to do that. I apologize, but it is increased. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to actually go into these pages. Actually, you know what? We don't have to do that. We're gonna go and create a new widget and this is going to be called my bottom navbar dot dart. And then in here, we will create a stateless widget called my bottom nav bar. And then to get those errors to go away, we have to import from Flutter material. Okay, great. Now what we're gonna do is we'll just add a child here and we'll just add some text uh, that says bottom navigation bar just so we can see something right and then what we'll do is we'll go into the my home page which is the page that we're currently on and we will take away this actually yeah this floating action button well actually we can leave it there we will add bottom navigation bar and we're just going to add my bottom navigation bar and as you can see, it doesn't look that great, but as you can see, it is there. Bottom navigation bar, it's right down there. Pause, make the video full screen. I'll try to remember to zoom in as well so that you can see that. But basically what happened is that the text is just displayed, nothing special. That means, and we can also actually add the same thing on the other page here, um, just like so. We don't actually have a way of getting to that page right now because I deleted the button, but we will in a second. That basically means that everything else that we have to do kind of just lives inside of here right now. Uh, we can essentially just start adding the things that we want to add. And so what we're going to do, actually right, so now that we have our container, which will hold basically everything inside of our bottom navigation bar, what we can now do is create a row and inside of here, this will be the children, which will basically be instead of child, we have multiple ones, right? And they will be of type widgets, and it's going to be an array, right? Get that organized. 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to use something else that Flutter has called the icon button. Basically, that allows us to show an icon as well as do something when that icon is pressed. So we will have icon button. The icon that we're going to be using is something just kind of random. I'm just going to pick a camera. And then here, this is just the function that we're going to be using. Let's see what this error is here. This actually takes in an icon, which will be icons camera. No more error. This. All right, so now we don't have any problems here. And that's what this should look like right now. And you can see here that this actually does something now, right? There's something down here that we can see the icon, right? Let's try printing something to the debug console just to demonstrate that it works. We'll say camera pressed debug console. We'll clear this. And you can see this does in fact work here, right? So everything that we have so far is working pretty well. Now what we want to do is we want to add a few more of them because let's say that we want to have four of, or no, we only have two. So let's just say that we want to have two because that's the, that's the, uh, the amount of pages that we have so far. So let's actually change this to home because we have a home page. We'll say home. We can leave this as camera because our other page really doesn't mean anything. And we can see here that we now have these two buttons. In addition to that, the uh, the console logging or the printing rather, I'm still used to JavaScript. The printing is in fact correct. Okay, great. Let's now increase uh, the the size of these. This takes in a size, and we can say we want this to be 28. Maybe it was already 28, 44. Yeah, right, it's a little bit bigger. Looks like the default size is 28 or something close to that. We'll add that again. I don't know if you guys noticed, but these two things got a little bit bigger. The next thing that we're going to do is basically add the functionality of actually going back and forth to our pages. And what's happening right now is that once we do that, technically from a functionality standpoint, everything is done. We just have to make it look pretty. So let's go ahead and do that. We will on pressed for the home one, say navigator, and then we'll use, uh, where is it? Push, push replacement named. Context stays the same, and the route is what we want now. So this, we now have to add these two things, which is why I didn't remove them. They were commented out. Uh, this doesn't get anything. Once you do this, you might get this error right here. What you have to do is basically redo the state, and that'll come back. It'll be there just like it was before. The reason is because hot reload is like just for minimal UI stuff and this is more intense. So now that we've done that, what we can do is we basically have our route set up. And what we're basically saying is we're creating named routes just like you would with a website where you have, you know, slash home, slash contact, slash about. We're basically doing the same thing and saying to Flutter, hey, we want to do routing. We want to have routing and we want it to kind of act in the same way. We're not saying explicitly we want it to act in the same way that a website would, but we're saying we want to be able to use named routes. And to us, we know that's like what websites do, right? But we're saying we want to be able to use named routes instead of, you know, some random number or, or something else that you'd be able to do or, or referring to widgets or something. So that now from now on, we have these named routes that we can always refer to and it'll always work. And so the reason here that we're going to be doing push replacement named because there's also another option which is push named and that'll work just as well, right? You can see that when I go here, I'm getting it's moving to the right page. But if I change this to be named, same thing happens. So what's going on? That's kind of weird, isn't it? Let's try that again. Let's do named. I'll reset the state. We'll do this. It does the same thing. What's the difference? This is a very important difference. 
if you've noticed, I'll redo this again, I'll show you guys again. If you notice, if I hit this button, something on the page changes. Did you see what it was? It wasn't just that the screen flipped, not just that, something even more important. There's a button up here, an arrow, that allows you now to go back. But if I have push replacement named, and I refresh this, and I start hitting this button, that arrow doesn't show up. Why is that? What's going on? To demonstrate what's going on, it's actually very simple. I'm going to show you guys. This is very important. To demonstrate which is going on, what is going on rather, this is push replacement named. And this here is push named. What's basically happening is that every time you have a named route and you push it, you push another one, you basically push it onto the history of pages that the user has been to. So if you want to allow your users to go back a page, then you want to use push named because then they get that button, that arrow, and they can go back. But if you don't want them to be able to do that, like maybe you wouldn't want them to be able to do in when you're using a bottom navigation bar because ideally or generally you'd be setting your app up as if each different page on that bottom navigation bar is a separate part of the application. So there's really no reason to go back to the last section because they can just go to the section from the navigation bar at the bottom of the screen. So push named creates a stack, a history of all of the pages that the user has previously been to. Push replacement named pushes the new page and replaces the old page. And not only is this important from a functionality of what's going on standpoint, but it's also important from a performance standpoint because something else that happens is that every time you push a named replacement or every time you push a named page, the, the, the phone, right, still has to store the information for the previous pages. But in a replacement named, it doesn't. It removes completely the widgets that were there before and you now only have the current page. So it's a very important distinction and a very important trade-off to understand that you're making when you're developing your apps. So back to this, we're going to use a push replacement named here and from a very, uh, you know, functional standpoint, actually what we're going to do is we're also going to make this, I think other, we'll give that a save. We'll just redo the, uh, the state just in case I'll hit this. It goes to my other page. You can see that because it says other up here. I'm also going to go to the other page and I will get rid of something that I forgot to get rid of, which is the actions up inside of the app bar. Good. That home thing is now removed. We'll do this again. We'll go back to the app bar. And I don't really think we're going to be needing to go into any of the other pages anymore. So if I go here, this works. You can see that we're going to these pages. Don't worry about the transition. If you don't want the transition, I'm actually going to be making another video on animations. I just didn't really think it fit in to this one because it's not technically having to do with making a bottom navigation bar. But regardless, that is coming. So now that we have that, functionally, this works, right? We can go back and forth between our pages. What we want to do now is add some styling because right now, while it is technically a bottom navigation bar and everything works and whatnot, it doesn't really look all that nice so what we're going to do to fix that is start adding some fun properties uh, so the first thing that we're going to be setting is the height we're going to say height let's say it's 75 so that pushes everything up brings us out of the corner a little bit then what we're going to do is say padding will be edge insets and then only i have some other code here because i don't remember exactly the styling um, top will be, let's say 15 and the bottom, let's say will be 30. And that's because we want to basically make sure that this, this line right here doesn't really get in the way. The next thing we're going to do is the color. And for us, we don't have a theme here. I think it's this one that I want. Let's try 
234. This is just going to be totally random, by the way. 213 and 253. And we'll set this to be 1. Oh, that's nice, I think. So that's what we got there. Top for this. Let's bring that down to 10. Maybe even 5, honestly. That looks better. Then what we're going to do is we're going to, inside of this row, say main, whoops, nope, main access alignment, and this would be of type main access alignment, and then space evenly. So these are now kind of centered, right? And basically as many as we add now, if we were to add, let's say, seven more of these things, I'm not going to actually add seven more, but I'll add, let's say, two more, and we can see that these evenly space themselves out. We don't really have to do very much. We just kind of get that out of the box with that space evenly. Flutter takes care of everything, figures everything out that we need, okay? As far as a functionality standpoint, we're done. So, interestingly enough, the styling might not be the best, but you can basically make that however you want. You can make it look literally whatever you want, and from now on, it's no longer a matter of you know, bottom navigation bar getting it to work. It's more so just a matter of styling it to fit in with whatever it is that you're doing. So for example, in my app, that's what my bottom navigation bar looks like. Albeit I have two other icons, so it looks like there's a little bit more going on, right? Because there's four icons in total. But that's what my bottom navigation bar looks like. And you don't need to do anything fancy. It's all about simplicity. Well, it's all about simplicity if you want. I mean, if you really wanted to, you could add some picture behind there probably, and there you go, right? So that is how you make uh, a custom bottom navigation bar in Flutter. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned to the next video. Not totally sure what we're going to be doing in the next video, but we'll be doing something fun. If you like this video, definitely subscribe. Give me a thumbs up or a like or whatever they call it now. And also don't forget, check out the link in the description to take my survey about the channel. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.